The Tomb Raider games have a storied history for Digital Foundry, being used countless times as a way to judge various platform performance and rendering features since even before the PlayStation 4 was released. And like Clockwork, a new platform has come out and all the games in the new Tomb Raider trilogy have been ported to it. So in today's video, we're going to look at the image quality and graphical quality of the trilogy on Google Stadia's 4K Pro service and how that stacks up next to the Xbox One X or even the PC experience in select cases. So let's grab our bow and arrow and hop on in. Starting with the first game in the trilogy, there's a lot to say right at the start. With side-by-side -side images with the PC version, it becomes immediately obvious that the Stadia version of Tomb Raider 2013 is in fact utilizing the re-released Definitive Edition primed for current generation consoles. So that means we're looking at a game with increased saturation, slightly changed placement of geometry, and a very different looking model for Lara. At the same time though, that version of the game is also missing some of the nicer effects that the original PC version offered, like a lot of the tessellation for the world's objects, as you can see on the ground here. or the tessellation present on many of the other game's models, such as Laro, which help round her out instead of leaving awkward polygon edges showing. But beyond missing these things, which should be expected since the console versions also lack them, for an unknown reason the Stadia version is missing the bokeh depth of field effect in many cutscenes, which was present on the PC version and on the console versions. Beyond this, all other effects look to be the equal of those found on the console game, minus texture filtering, which looks to be extremely low here on Stadia. What the big difference is though is the output resolution and performance target. While the original PlayStation release targeted 1080p and 60fps but fell short rather often, and Xbox One X targeted 1080p with a few drops in cutscenes to 900p and 30fps, the version on Stadia here seems to run with a dynamic resolution setup targeting 60fps. Here, in a number of scenes, I counted a bit higher than 1440p resolution, so 1512p with a height at 1720p in one scene as well. But at the same time, these counts are not definitive, as they do not cover the entire course of the game, and the compression makes pixel counting in many scenes extremely difficult. As I say that though, I did notice that there appears to be some problems at times with the dynamic resolution scaling, or what I presume are problems. As in one scene, I did notice an extremely different count of resolution down to 1280 by 720 yeah, 720p. So in this one moment, the game looked like this, and in comparison to the Xbox One version, which looked like this at a maximum 1080p, which then looked like this in comparison to the PC version at 4K. So not too great. But on average, the resolution was higher in that 1512p range. So the game looks better than this on average. It will also have a different color palette than you might see in this video. As mentioned in my Red Dead Redemption 2 Stadia video, I was provided this footage from Richard Ledbetter, who has access to a connection which can play Stadia excellent quality streams, which rather inexplicably black crushed some of the footage here in this game. So it may appear a bit darker than it would on your own set. While the first game in the trilogy offers only one mode of performance and quality, Rise of the Tomb Raider from 2015 on Stadia offers two modes of performance that can be chosen in the menu. Here there is a performance and quality mode, with the quality mode targeting what looks to be 3840x2160 and 30fps. The performance mode targets 60fps and a resolution that appears to be 1080p or in excess of 1080p. I say that with such indecisiveness as pinning down a resolution in the performance mode has not been possible so far as there's multiple factors at play confounding it. One is the level of compression, which generally complicates pixel counting. If you look at any one scene here, you can see exactly what I mean if you compare it next to the Xbox One X version running at 1080p in its performance mode. Then there's the second confounding factor that Rise of the Tomb Raider on Stadia appears to get a great upgrade to its anti-aliasing. 
The original release on consoles and PC offered very poor single-frame post-process anti-aliasing. This combined with the lower resolution for specularity found on many objects and caused intense shimmering and aliasing. Even the game at high resolution on PC can show this. Stadia here in the performance mode on the other hand looks to be surprisingly very free of aliasing. But as I thought it might be a version of TAA, I discovered that the game on Stadia does not evidence typical TAA problems, such as the game being more aliased after camera cuts and cutscenes. But if you compare the performance mode back to back with the visibly 4K quality mode above it, it does confirm that it's a decidedly lower resolution than 4K. And if you look at edges present in the Xbox One X 1080p version, you can see that the Stadia version has smoothed over edges that line up one to one more or less. It's just that they're massively smoothed over with good gradients. This much more effective anti-aliasing is also combined with a difference on how level of detail is handled for vegetation objects, like here outside the temple. Xbox One X uses an LOD for the vegetation that is overly detailed and with too many small features for the output resolution of 1080p. This means details smaller than the pixels present cause subpixel shimmering and makes the vegetation go in and out of existence. Stadia here in performance mode has vegetation that uses a level of detail that is different or perhaps a different asset actually that has much fatter detail on the leaves making it so that there's very little subpixel detail. Even with this difference though, for some reason the Stadia performance feed has its vegetation shimmering a lot where it is not on Xbox One X necessarily in the same scene. So the real resolution in Stadia performance mode is hard to put down actually. It looks similar to 1080p while having much smoother gradients on opaque surfaces but looking sometimes worse on vegetation. In terms of rendering effects and settings, the tables turn though and the Xbox One X version comes out on top. One of the larger differences is the lower quality of textures for nearly every asset found in the game in the Stadia version in both quality modes. Here on many objects like this hand radio here, you can see an obvious pixelization from their lower resolution even through the game's compression. As mentioned, this extends to nearly every object in the game, thus giving the game a generally softer look on all of its surfaces. This is then coupled with what appears to be a lower level of anisotropic filtering as well further crunching the inner surface texture detail on objects as they go into the distance. Then there are effects which appear to be missing that I actually expected given the advertised 10.7 GPU teraflops that the Stadia versions should have access to, like volumetric lighting. In many scenes in the Xbox One X version of the game, or even the Xbox One version, there's a surprisingly high quality volumetric lighting streaming in, setting the mood. In the Stadia version, all instances of volumetric lighting appear to have been culled out of the game, turning areas that were thick with atmosphere on Xbox One X to areas with decidedly less atmosphere on Stadia. Beyond things missing in comparison to Xbox One X, the Stadia version forgoes obvious enhancements that I honestly think it could have had. Many of the effects found in Xbox One X's enhanced graphics mode are not found in the Stadia version. For example, in this opening cutscene here, the additional reflections of Lara and her ice picks in the ice are visible in the 4K checkerboarded enhanced quality mode on Xbox One X. In Stadia's quality mode, on the other hand, and in the native 4K mode on Xbox One X, they are missing. Likewise, additional draw distance for certain bits of geometry and vegetation found in the enhanced quality mode on Xbox One X are missing in the quality mode found on Stadia. Oh, and that awesome tessellation added to the PC version and Xbox One X's enhanced quality mode? Yeah, that's missing from Stadia's quality mode. Stadia's quality mode also doesn't take advantage of higher quality ambient occlusion as found on Xbox One X's enhanced quality mode. Then there are other oversights and cuts which make me scratch my head a bit. Like here in the beginning of the game, the snow deformation is missing the rim decal effect on Stadia, which is present on PC and in all modes of Xbox One X. Or here in that cutscene leading up to the Syrian chapter, this character opposite of Lara in the Xbox One X version uses the pure hair rendering method for their hair, which looks really excellent. On Stadia's quality mode, that is missing and is instead replaced by the typical lower fidelity alpha transparency card style of rendering. 
Shadow of the Tomb Raider as the last game in the trilogy is the area where we see the greatest level of parity between the Xbox One X version of the game and the Stadia version. The original game on Xbox One X offered two modes of play. A uh, high resolution mode with internal 4K rendering resolution targeting 30 FPS, and a high performance mode with the exact same graphical makeup targeting 60 FPS at 1920 by 1080. Performance targets that both modes largely managed to hit, as my colleague John Linamed detailed in 2018. Here, the Stadia version of the game follows a similar split, with a quality mode targeting 3840 by 2160 and 30 FPS and a performance mode targeting 60 FPS, but seemingly using what appears to be a light bit of dynamic resolution scaling. The DRS was discovered by looking through a number of screenshots and still managing to find various different pixel counts, from 1224p up to 1350p. These numbers come of course with the caveat that resolution counting through Stadia's compression is not exactly always so clear cut, and that we have not tested every single area of the game so this may go higher and it may go lower. The graphical differences to the Xbox One X version beyond this are extremely minor in direct comparisons I have gathered. As far as I can tell, the Stadia version looks to use graphical settings that are extremely similar to the Xbox One X, with the only differences being visible in post-processing usually. For example, the simulated f-stop of the bokeh depth of field effect in the game is different between Xbox One X and Stadia, so objects out of focus on Stadia have smaller bokeh shapes and are clearer than those found on Xbox One X. Interestingly, I went to the PC version and found out that all settings for depth of field there match the bokeh shape and depth of field as found on Stadia. Likewise, there's a difference in the anti-aliasing quality on Xbox One X and Stadia. On camera cuts and when the lighting changes rapidly, the Stadia version shows less aliasing on fine detail than Xbox One X. Presumably the game on Stadia uses one of the higher quality anti-aliasing modes as found on PC, but it should be noted that it evidences less aliasing on cuts in things like hair because compression quite literally destroys the detail that aliasing could appear in. Oh, and much like all the other games in this collection, and seemingly many games on Stadia, anisotropic filtering is also lessened into basically nothingness in both performance and quality mode in the Stadia version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All other changes are just minor oversights, like here at the beginning of the game, where the LOD for the skeleton on the ground is of a lower quality on Xbox One X. Or there's this strange thing where a number of lights found in the game on Stadia have a different position than they do on Xbox One X, changing the look of some scenes. Like here where there's clearly a light visibly above Lara on Stadia, where Xbox One X has no light in comparison. Or here just a bit further where these piles of bones in the doorway or the light above the other passage have different positions on Xbox One X than they do on Stadia. Oh, and Jonah? For some reason he's missing eyelashes on the Stadia version. So really minor and strange things. In the end, the collection of Tomb Raider games on Stadia is generally of a commendable quality given the constraints of the Stadia platform, and honestly they offer up good versions of these games in general, especially if you compare it to the other ventures we've seen on the Stadia platform so far. But their various rendering resolutions, their performance, and the quality of their effects throws up a number of question marks regarding the quality of rendering that is realistically attainable on Stadia. For example, texture quality in all of these titles is decidedly lessened in comparison to the console counterpart in the Xbox One X, either by having a lower resolution in general as shown in Rise of the Tomb Raider, or by having a lower quality anisotropic filtering as found in all of the games on Showcase. Is there perhaps a best practice for Stadia stream quality that recommends a reduction of detail at a distance to maintain overall stream quality? I know high resolution textures at a distance change pixels frame per frame when rendered locally. I can imagine that would be hard to compress without a general degradation to overall image quality. Then we have the settings and the performance. Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider on Stadia do not markedly change the graphical makeup by making use of advanced rendering features found in the PC versions. They look extremely similar to the Xbox One X. And in the case of Rise of the Tomb Raider, it is missing things like volumetric lighting, which all current generation versions of the game have. 
I would imagine theoretically that a GPU with as much advertised power as that found in Stadia would allow for higher performance, higher resolution, and higher effects quality than the GPU in the Xbox One X is capable of. So why is that not being evidenced in the ways we expect in these games? Nonetheless, these are still competent ports of the games and are very playable especially Shadow of the Tomb Raider in its 60fps quality mode, which I really recommend over the enhanced resolution modes available in those games. I guess we will have to wait and see how more titles fare in the future to get a more complete understanding of the rendering performance that Stadia can really offer. And until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, then hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, then please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you would like to talk to me about the Tomb Raider games on Stadia, then write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. And as always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.